Hey guys, it's Hades here and welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to prepare to go to the nether. And the only reason why we're not actually going to go to the nether this episode is because there's so many things for me to tell you. So many possible things to do and it could take hours. So that's why this episode we will be preparing to go to the nether and I'll be showing you the resources and tools we will need to get to the nether as well as a few little tricks along the way, as always. And then next episode, we will be going to the Nether. And I'll have a lot to cover in this episode and the next one. So they should be some pretty good episodes. But to start off, there was a few little buttons that I forgot to mention in previous episodes, which they're kind of not really that useful, but they are useful. So I'm going to quickly go through them. And the first one is F5. This brings you into third person mode. See if I can sprint, you can see the little dust particles coming off my feet when I'm sprinting. When I'm walking normally they don't. It's a good way of just really looking around you a bit better. Not many people play in third person, but you might want to do it if you're having fun with a friend in a mini game or if you just want to look at your character. The only real benefit to third person is I quickly use it in PvP sometimes. So I sh probably should have mentioned this in the PvP episode, but... So when I'm running away, you can press F5 once to go into this mode, press it again to look behind you. Then you quickly press it again to go back to this mode. So then you never have to stop sprinting to turn around and look behind you. So if the guy's chasing you, press F th F5 twice, you go, oh, look, he's too far away, I'm all good, press it again, and you're good to go, and you can turn around and go, oh, bow him in the face, owned. So that's a really that's really the only advantage I know to using F5. It's a good way of looking behind you when you're running away. But if you're running away, you're probably not the best at PvP in the first place. But I guess running away is a key part. I guess it is pretty important if you're if you're lower or under geared, less geared than the opponent, it's probably best to run away. Um and the other option for it was t for taking screenshots. How do you think I get all my gorgeous screenshots out the front of servers and stuff? I just go like this and go, bam, screenshot, bam, screenshot. So you can either use the Windows screenshot, of course, which is print screen, or Minecraft has its own built-in one, which is F2. See there? I pressed F2 and it took a screenshot. You don't have to be in F5 mode. Like, you can press F2 whenever you want to take screenshots, but people usually like to take screenshots of themselves just because, obviously, you want to look good and you want to look sharp for the camera. And there is one more button which has to do with taking screenshots, and that is using... Wait, we'll go F5. We'll go back to this, so we're in first person. And then just say we want to take a screenshot of this, but we don't want our sword and all those items and chat in the way. You just go ahead and click F1, and it clears everything. Look at that. Now I'm in screenshot mode, I like to call it. And I can press F2. And then press F1 again and see it said save screenshot. So it took a screenshot while there was nothing on my screen. So that's really good for thumbnails on YouTube if you want to upload your own videos. And yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Hopefully you guys understand that. F1 to go to screenshot mode. F2 to take a screenshot. And F5 to go third person, which I like to use to look behind me. Now we better jump straight into it before I get too distracted. And we really, I did a couple adjustments to that, but that, ignore that for now. We need to go mining. Whoop, did I bring the necessary resources? You always want to make sure you have the resources before you go mining. And you also want to make sure you're not bringing anything too important. See, torches. I'm a bit low on torches, but I'm going to compensate for that. Seeing I've already jumped in the hole and make myself a crafting table. Hmm, alright. So we'll go this way. And my iron pickaxe is nearly dead, so we're going to try and save that as long as possible. Because we're actually looking for diamonds now. To get to the nether, you need three diamonds. And you may be going, why would you need diamonds? I heard you needed a nether portal, but... Okay, so to build this portal that goes to the nether, there's a few key things. Let's try and mark this. Let's mark where we're going real quick. I don't have much torches, but just so I don't get lost. Mm-hmm. That should do it. So to go to the nether, you need to build a nether portal. 
And nether portals. Oh, we're on peaceful. I better change that to make it a bit more exciting. Nearly forgot. There we go. So yeah, you need a nether portal to go to the nether. And, oh, there's a lot of enemies down there. And to make a nether portal, you need 10 obsidian blocks. Now, obsidian. You may remember this from my mining episode. And it is the black stuff down there that you can see. The way to get obsidian... Oh, is that guy going to blow up? I thought it was going to blow up when that bat flew past him. Anyway, yep. So to get obsidian, what you need is a diamond pickaxe. We don't have a diamond pickaxe right now, so we cannot pick up the obsidian, and we cannot make the portal. So that is why we need the diamonds to make the diamond pickaxe to get this obsidian. Now this is going to be a mission and a half. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought, because I want to go down there. Because to get diamonds, we need to be in between, like, level 5 and level 16, I believe it was. But you don't really need to pay attention to that. F3 brings up that menu and shows you the actual coordinates you're at. So, yeah. We don't really care about that at the moment. What I'm going to try and do is make my way down there safely. And if you did watch my mining episode, you'll know exactly what I'm doing now. I'm building a staircase like I recommended. And I'm actually lining myself up with this water here. So, I'm actually going to try and drop down into the water so I don't take fall damage. But, as you can see, there are a lot of enemies down there. So I've got to be ready to rumble as soon as I fall down. Let's try this out. Let's give it a shot. Alright, alright, we're good, we're good. We've got some skeletons shooting at us. We should mark that waterfall. Yep, we're good. We'll block his arrows. Take 50% less damage than when he shoots me. He doesn't even hit me when I'm blocking. GG. Well, he does usually. He just failed that. Now, oh, nearly fell in the lava. That was a nice try. Okay, guys, the reason why you'll see that I'm not really focusing on the combat is because the most important thing is I'm not losing too much health right now. The most important thing for me is to not get lost down here and always have an escape method if I do start to take too much damage. So I'm just making sure I've got a clear path of where I'm going and I'm 100% safe to get in and out of here as I need and try and make it so I don't fall in lava. So there we go, let's mark this like that. So that pretty much explains it, that'll get me back to where I need to go. And I guess we're going to go away from those creepers at the moment. How many uses does this have? 40. So we've still got plenty in this. Because we only need 3 to get our 3 diamonds that we need. To pick up that obsidian down there. And if you don't happen to have obsidian. Like I got pretty lucky right there. And I can see obsidian. But if you don't have obsidian. In your world. If you can't find any. You just have to find lava. Make yourself a water bucket. And then tip the water over the lava. See, that's how the obsidian formed. Is there was just a lava pool here and this water went over the lava. Therefore making obsidian. So it's not that hard to make your own obsidian. All you got to do is find lava. Alright, now this is looking like a bit of a dead end here. Is it? Is it a dead end? There's some gold. I could make a butter helmet with that. Gold's pretty useless. Let's grab it anyway. We've got... We've got enough uses in this pick to last us, I think. Okay. So we're going to go the other direction here. I actually picked a bad direction going that way. It looks like a dead end. Hopefully this way is a bit more promising. Actually, let's see if we can... Is there anything up here? What's that? No. Alright. Just making sure, guys. We don't want to miss out on any diamonds. Keep an eye out for me. Because I'm, I'm not really looking at every block, and if I miss some, you might want to just fill me in and be like, at this exact time, Hades, you walk past the diamond to your left. Just help me out if you see anything really useful. I know there's some of the eye in there at the moment, but I'm kind of avoiding it, just because I've got a bunch of mobs on my tail. Diggy diggy. Don't forget to keep our hunger up in case we need a sprint at any time at, during this. And I know you guys wanted a mining episode, that's why I decided to include the mining. I normally wouldn't for an episode like this, because it takes up a lot of time. 
to actually do this mining. If I would have just found the diamonds off camera, it would have been a lot quicker and I would have been able to cover a lot more information. But, yeah, I'm going to be mining because that's what you guys are telling me in the comments. And you guys in the comments basically own my channel. I do whatever you guys want. I'm basically, this channel is for you. And that's why I appreciate the likes and support you guys give me. Because it means a lot. Let's try and... We're going to have to set up this crafting table soon. Let's try and get back into the cave. Alright. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Where are we looking at now? What have we got here? This looks interesting. That's... We really need to set something up. Let's quickly do this. Let's quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's grab some of this. Um, we don't need many sticks. That should do us. We need coal. I didn't mine any coal. But I can make myself another pickaxe real quick. Because this one's dying. And if you see any coal, we got to grab that. Hmm... No coal in direct for Ooh, right there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So we're going to use this coal to bump up our torch supply a bit. Because I know it gets pretty dark for you guys. Like on YouTube, it looks a lot darker than what it looks for me. And that's pretty important. If any of you guys like to record, you need to take little notes like that as well. Like it's just little things I've picked up over time. Like it's, re I just, it's really dark. On YouTube, I don't know why. Let's just finish up grabbing this coal. And I guess I'll talk about the other stuff we need. Besides diamonds and a diamond pick to pick up the obsidian, you need a ooh, you need a way of lighting up. Did I have any arrows left? I do, I got one arrow I think. Of course, a glitch spider. Awesome. Exactly what I needed. Yep, so you need a way to light the portal once you have created it. And the way I'd suggest to light it is with a flint and steel, which I covered in a previous episode. What a surprise. Come at me, bro. You think you're so cool with your mustache? Oh! I didn't take much damage. That was alright. I forgot to block them, but I thought he would have been knocked back a certain amount. Let's, um... Continue up here, I guess. What the fuck? Get off my face, bro! Well... This is, um... This looks like it's going up. We want to try and stay down, so... I'm going to continue down this way. After I've made these torches. Let's go down this way first. And then we'll go exploring up that way. Because diamonds are only really low, guys. You've got to remember that. And I'm only after diamonds this episode. So I don't care about all this other stuff. I'm grabbing it on the way, but... This main objective is to get diamonds. Because I need to get this obsidian this episode... So we can go to the nether next episode. Um. Oh! GG! Give me the diamonds, bro! Well, that was easier than I thought. It's about. It's not that hard to find diamonds, to be perfectly honest, guys. Oh, more than one diamond! Wow! Come on. Go for like an eight vein. Eight vein of diamonds. Nah. What the. What is this shit? Only four? Come on, bro. Give me one more. That's a diamond down there, is it? Four? Four? Okay. Any more back here? And no, uh, only four. Four's pretty good, though, guys. Four is, like, a good amount. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these. And that's enough for our diamond pick, because we only need three for the diamond pick. And we had one at home as well. So that's good. That's really good, actually. That's, um... Let's go up here real quick. And I'm going to make this diamond pick right now. And I'll show you how to make it. It's exactly the same as all the other picks, but... You know, whatever. We'll grab this. So that's good. That actually happened a lot quicker than I thought. And there we go. Diamond pick, guys. Just like that. And it has tons of uses, so we can start using this now. Let's destroy one block. 1,561 uses. So that's GG, guys. Oh, you're not killing me now, bitch. Yeah, you can blow up my crafting table, but you only do half a heart of damage to me with my iron armor. Are you mad? That guy's mad. Alright. So, that was 
that's good. So we got... I already have the flint and steel. Oh, need to be careful not to be knocked in lava. There's a lot of weird terrain here. Like, it's really jagged and lots of blocks missing and shit. Yeah, we'll grab this. Chuck this back down. I'm just picking up some gold just for the sake of future tutorials because I know I need some gold for certain things. And I guess we'll head out of here soon. And I can probably come back here off camera and just scavenge all the rest of the materials that I kind of walked past because I don't need it for this episode or the next one. Let's actually check down here. I think there might be more diamonds. Oh, I don't really want to get too stuck. Oh my god, what have I got myself with? This just brought me back down to here. Awesome. Die! Come at me, bro! Dead, all dead. You don't really need to try as hard against skeletons. You know those PvP tips I gave you? I would only use them in PvP. I don't really use them while fighting enemies like the Oh, what's this? No, oh, one piece of coal. If that was a diamond, I would have been cheering, but no. Nah. Diggy diggy. Let's just get out of here now, I guess. We do have some alright resources. Um, what the fuck? This is the way we came from. Okay. So that's good, that's good. We're, we're onto something here. Let's just jump across like this. <laughs> this isn't the safe way of doing it, guys. This is the Hades way of doing it. When I'm mining. <laughs> this is just the whatever, I don't care way of doing it. Now, that was the hole, wasn't it? So we already walked past it. Oh, get some sprint action in there. Oh, jump down to here. And we gotta go... Wait, I keep walking past it. It's about... Here. Now, if you were stuck down here with no way of getting out... Oh, we should probably grab this obsidian. Oh, should we? Yeah, we, we should, we should, we should. Let's light this up for you guys. Because i got to get the obsidian from somewhere, so... Why not do it while we're down here? Let's just block this water up. You gotta block water off at the source, guys. It's a very common problem I see with people trying to block off water. You just block it off at the source. The actual source would have been up there, so that would have been one block right up that top there to block the whole thing. But if I can't get up there, this is fine. So, ten blocks. And you just left click and you hold it for about 15 seconds. It takes a long time to break this obsidian. But it is worth it. And there we go, I got one. And another little tip. If you are mining obsidian near lava, you just go ahead and place a water bucket down. And then you start mining it. Because then even if there is lava below the obsidian, it won't burn. The water will turn it to obsidian before... See, just like that, that was a perfect example. Do it, the obsidian should still be in there. Yep, I picked it up. There was lava below that block. That was a perfect example. I did not know about the lava, so I placed this water just in case. And that let me pick it up, because it turned that lava below it to obsidian before it could burn. Because normally items would burn in the lava. Perfect example. I'm a, I'm a fucking genius. Did you, did you see that? I didn't even... Oh, that's so good. I love it when things just work out perfectly. It seems this episode is just... I've just been so lucky. Like, I always call it before it happens. And I always get it all right. And I don't know, I'm just... I'm fluking out. In my single player world, I do not get this lucky. It's more likely that I was standing on that block. I dug it, fell in and killed myself and lost all the obsidian in my diamond pick. That's what is more likely to happen in my single player world, but... Seem to be doing alright. Now, you may be looking at that and going, that doesn't look like a zombie. That's because it is a zombie villager. And we could actually turn that, that zombie into back into a villager. It dropped some iron there, so that was pretty good. Oh no, Hades missed. Noob. Come on. It took like three arrows, just die. Yeah, so... Oh, there's so many... What's the deal with this? What the fuck? Okay, time to get hardcore try-hard try mode now. Let's pick up this guy's arrows and... Die, bitch! Give me some more arrows. Damn it, they're gonna keep spawning. Gotta make sure we're topped up on food. And yeah, we could convert that, that zombie villager back to a villager. 
if we had potions. But I'm going to be covering potions in a later episode. As I said, guys, I'm just going to grab the ten obsidian this episode. Quickly, um, quickly get myself back up to the surface. I will build the portal for you guys. And I might show you another little trick. Haven't decided if this episode goes on for too long. I might not. Actually, I will. I will. I'll show you this little extra thing I have planned for you guys. I was going to do it in a... Oh, you piss me off! Die! I think I blocked that. Oh, my. Not cool. Not cool at all. Not cool at all, buddies. Let's get a crit in there. There we go. Alright. We got eight, so we only need two more. Let's just rule this out, guys. Come on. Mine! Mine, you shitty diamond pickaxe. Come on. Mm-hmm. One more. Hopefully it does only take ten. I was just guessing from my previous experiences. So, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's approximately ten. It's about ten. Let's grab two more, Justin. Nah, fuck it. Live life on the... No, I better get two more just in case. <laughs> I need two... I need three more, actually. For something I want to cover next episode. So I'll get that as well while I'm here. Why not? I mean... Mo's as well. Saves me from coming down here in the next episode. Is that even hitting the block? Was that not hitting the block? Oh, well. Range noob here. Okay... And at the end of this episode, I think I might cover Minecraft weather. I kind of... I didn't cover it previously, and it's really important. You may just think, I don't care, I only want sun, because all the rest of the weather just pisses me off. And that's true, the weather pisses me off in Minecraft as well. But, it is still very, very important to learn about the weather in Minecraft, because you can use it to your advantage in a lot of situations and I'm going to show you some little tricks once I get back up to the surface oh sorry I won't be able to do it in this world there we go back up to the top genius absolutely genius and if you didn't have the blocks to do that you would obviously just mine it and then you would build your way up let's grab this real quick damn it I keep getting distracted all these ores I've got to do this off camera, guys, because it takes so long to actually mine it. I hope you don't mind this one being a long episode, and the next one will probably be a long episode as well. So I don't know if you guys are into that type of stuff, because some of you, I like to keep them fairly short, so you have time to watch it, like a good half an hour each day, or 20 minutes, any longer than that, and it kind of, I don't know, like I usually don't have time to watch it, but most of you probably would have time. It really depends, like, everyone's different, so, let's just get out of here, quickly, come at me bro, you think you're so cool, I'll get the crits on you bro, do you see the crits, you stand at no chance, why would you even bother coming into the, into my world, oh, no, he's got an enchanted bow, dig, dig Haynes, dig to freedom, there we go, we're in the sunlight now, they can't really get up here, not anymore anyway, there's the adjustments I made, and that's all fully grown. Where do we want this nether portal, though? It does make a bit of a weird noise. But I'm going to build it here anyway. Let's build it... Let's build it right here. So, to build your nether portal, you need flint and steel. You need ten obsidian. You need random dirt blocks. You need Minecraft character. And I go dirt block, dirt block. You can use obsidian as these blocks, but it is a waste. And I'll show you that in a second. You go like this, just like that. So it's meant to be four across the bottom, and then up, and then up, and then four across the top. But you can use the corners as any block. So I like to save it and not waste my obsidian. And then you just go up a couple, just like that. Go up another one, just like that. Then you put your dirt blocks up here and so you'll be looking at something like this and then you put your obsidian blocks there and there and there you have it your nether portal is complete okay so if you're doing this in your world and you want it to look really nice 
You can put obsidian blocks in the corners as well. Or you could put a nice gold block there or something. Like, I might want to use wood in the future or something. I don't know. Like, you might want to get some netherrack. Who knows? But that is all you need for the nether portal. And then you need to light it up. You can light it up with anything that creates fire. So you can tip lava next to it and put wood there and the fire will spread to it and light it up type thing. The easiest way is the flint and steel. Or it could even be lit up by gask fireballs, which you find in the nether. Gasp, gasp, gasp. Whatever! I don't know how to pronounce stuff, you get it. And it's turning night time. We're, no, we're going to finish up the episode here. Let's try and leg it, okay. And to light it up, you right-click your fire there. Bam! We have the nether portal complete. Now, I have a feeling I have sound off. Let's turn that on to one. There we go. Alright. So, that's it, guys. We are prepared to go to the nether. Next episode, I will be going into the nether. So, make sure to stay tuned for that. And just before I end this episode, I am going to cut to another clip I pre-recorded on my other server. I'll, I'll give you the IP of my server if you want to join it. pvp.hadescraft.com So I'm actually going to be recording on that server. I'm going to cut to a clip I recorded. And I'm going to be showing you the effects of weather in Minecraft. Now you may be like, what is this guy on about? He knows nothing. Blah, blah, blah. There's some little tips that I think are pretty interesting. So I'm going to cut to that now. Alright guys, I'm on my Hadescraft PvP server. And the reason why I had to jump onto this server was just to recreate some weather effects. Because on this server I have full control of everything. See how I'm flying. I can change the weather. Do whatever I want. But I could not do that on my single player world without cheating. So let's go ahead and just... I'll go back to where I was testing out these things. And I'll start explaining the weather I guess. So there is a couple different weather conditions in Minecraft. There's of course the snowy and snow biomes, the rain and that type of stuff. But they're not the main focus of why I had to come here. The main focus of why I needed to be able to control the weather was because of thunderstorms. And thunderstorms on Minecraft, they actually do a lot more than you would, you would think they do. So to start off, the thunder hits the ground randomly, kind of, and it can actually hit you and do damage to you. And it can hit enemy mobs and do damage to them also. And on top of that, it can light you on fire. It can light trees on fire and start forest fires. It's actually harder to do that because it's actually raining during a thunderstorm. But if the lightning hits underneath a tree or in a place that the rain can't reach, it'll start a fire. And what else can it do? It can light up nether portals. If the thunder was to hit the nether portal, it knocks off paintings, it knocks off minecarts. Of course, the rain actually does damage to blazes, endermen, and snow golems. So those three mobs, the rain actually does damage to. And on top of all of that, there is a little tip that I thought I'd really want to show you. And that's why I'm on the server. Let's chuck down some creepers. And I'm going to fly up here and I'm going to recreate a thunderstorm on top of them. So I can do that just by typing smite in chat. That'll cause a lightning strike to hit those creepers. So let's see what happens. Bam! Now, as you can clearly see, all the ones that got hit by thunder turned into super creepers. And they explode. They took a bit of damage. They did light on fire. But they also turned into super creepers and they explode nearly double the size of a normal creeper. So if you see one of these guys coming at you, it means that they've been hit by lightning and they now explode massive amounts. So let's go game mode 1 and then type god real quick. And they're going to explode and you'll see the size of the explosion. Look at that. That was one creeper. The other ones didn't have time to explode. And that's a normal one. So as you can see, it was pretty much double the size. Go back to game mode 1 real quick. So, there you go. That's the first little tip that you might not have known. Creepers that get struck by lightning turn into super creepers and explode at double the damage. And I guess it doesn't really affect you that much if you just play single player worlds. The chance of you running into a super creeper is pretty low because the chance of them getting hit by lightning is pretty low. But if you're on a modded server where you have access to thunder, you can set up traps how creepers come out and then you lightning strike them all and they go attack your friend's base and blow it up. 
or if there's like certain servers where you have creeper eggs and you're using them to blow up enemies' bases, like this particular server. If lightning was allowed, like if you could use lightning as a move, you could turn your creepers into super creepers to do more damage. So that's another useful little tip. But I'm not done yet. What happens when pigs get struck by lightning? 90% <laughs> of you are going, What are you on about, Hades? How would a pig get struck by lightning? But that's tested out, guys. Smite! Bam! They get turned into pigmen. They have no weapons, but they do get turned into pigmen. And that is actually one of the best ways to set up a good defense. If you have... I'm just trying to tell you uses for this, guys. So, of course these guys are on fire, but they don't take fire damage. That's why they're kind of glitching out like that. But yeah, so... It's a good way of getting pigmen into the overworld, for one thing. Because they usually spawn in the nether, which we'll be going to next episode. But the other good use for it is... That if you have a whole bunch of them in like a pen... In your base, like a whole bunch of pigs, and you and an enemy walks in the door. You quickly lightning strike all your pigs, they turn into these. And then if you hit one of them, they all swarm you. See, I'm in god mode right now, so they do nothing. But imagine that if that was an enemy trying to get into your base. And you had a whole bunch of pigs there, you're like, Here, come get me, I've got nothing except my lightning move. Lightning the pigs, bam! Pigmen, gone wild. They will rape whoever hits them. So that is extremely good. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with the weather. I'm actually going to leave these roaming around on my server. Some poor soul will walk into them and get owned, maybe. And I guess that's it, guys. Don't forget to chuck this video a like if you enjoy the series and want to support it. Because as some of you know, or most of you should know, I do whatever you guys tell me in the comments and whichever series you guys support the most is the series I upload the most. So make sure to get on that, and thank you so much for the support guys in the last few days. I've got tons of things going at the moment, and I guess that's it. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.